Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake. No rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Rick Ross, the self proclaimed kingpin, but actual former corrections officer. See ya! I know, I can already see from here, from where I'm at, that this nigga's a total fraud. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not even no uh, issue. But I paid for the transcripts to your court case. Trick Daddy recently accused you of working as a prison guard at one point, Rick. Is there any truth to that? No, that's not true. But that's that's disappointing to hear that he said that. He said that? Like you did 10 years in jail, right? Yeah. How you think about the whole Rick Ross thing, him being a correctional officer? And dealing with correctional officers. Wow. Wow. <laughs> fake niggas get taped up and sent back. Use a fake nigga, you makes up a good act. Now I now I know you. I, I think it's fair to say um I know you now. Was Rick Ross in his lifetime a corrections officer? Rick Ross done did it all to get money. I done did it all except set dudes up, put dudes behind bars, and that's what's important to me. Pictures turn up uh, of of you online, right? Or, or of person that looks like you online, who's working as a correctional officer. Uh, is that or is that not Rick Ross in those pictures? That was me in the photos. I'm the truth when your truth's just pretend. I hear lies in every one of your lines with no flow of mine. Magnify times five. You lost some Ross. Now bullets are flying in hip hop as back to back disses are being dropped and shots keep getting fired. At this point, it seems like Drake versus everybody, but one person in particular is standing out. Rick Ross would drop an immediate response to Drake's diss, but that isn't what's got my attention. Ross would keep dissing through Instagram and referring to Drake as a white boy as if that's an insult. Well, now you got a white boy's attention. Apparently, everybody forgot the biggest boss of Miami, the hustler who knew Pablo and Noriega, the man who thinks he's Big Meech, Larry Hoover. Everybody forgot he was a fucking CO. Lead the way. Now, this isn't new news. Back in 2008, pictures would be released of Ross in uniform, and he'd speak exclusively with all hip-hop stating, My life is 100% real. These online hackers putting a picture of my face when I was a teenager in high school on other people's body. If this shit was real, don't you think they would have more specifics, like dates and everything? So a then 32-year-old Ross claimed the pic was photoshopped, his kingpin lifestyle was real, and there was no proof behind the CO allegations. Well, a media website by the name of The Smoking Gun would send in a public records request receiving 86 pages from the Florida Department of Corrections about Officer Ricky's short career. A photo of William Roberts, aka Rick Ross's State of Florida application, would state he received his diploma from Miami Carroll City High and went on to Albany State University to study criminal justice. On his supplementary application, he'd state his nickname was Big East and denied knowing anyone in prison along with never working in prison or in law enforcement. Now with every new recruit, the Department of Corrections wants to know how willing you are to complete your correctional duties. Ross would check off he's willing to work rotating shifts, carry a firearm, and work with violent inmates, homosexuals, etc. He'd also state he's willing to shoot an inmate who's attempting to escape, body search a male or female inmate, and write an incident report. In 1995, Ross would take an oath of loyalty to support the Constitution and would receive a letter stating he's now officially a correctional officer trainee at the South Florida Reception Center. Five months later, it was now 1996, and Ross would receive an award for completing 540 hours of basic training. Ross was now an official corrections officer and can be seen taking a picture at his graduation ceremony. Four months later, he'd receive a certificate of appreciation for perfect attendance from the same woman he can be seen shaking hands with at his ceremony. But eventually, all good things must come to an end. 
And in June of 1997, Ricky Rose sent in a resignation letter and officially left the force. But like I said, this isn't new news. This came out back in 2008, and 50 Cent started calling Ross Officer Ricky in 2009. That same year, Rick Ross would admit to XXL it was in fact him in the pictures. He'd state, me not answering or addressing that situation has nothing to do with my career. I've accomplished enough and I've made enough money for me to be good. Yes, it was me in those pictures, but I'ma tell you this, me taking that job, I was doing my job. You understand what I mean? He continue on saying the stuff he talks about is real, the dope is real, and the gun talk is official. But fans would forever speculate, when exactly was Rick Ross in the streets serving bricks? In an interview with the Full Send podcast, the alleged kingpin was asked about his time as a corrections officer in Florida State Prison. Were you a correctional officer at one point? I was, yeah. So going all the way back, when was that? How long ago? Um, Maybe when I was 20. 20 years old? Yeah. What what kind of people were in there? You know, I, I didn't get, really get to make it to the, the prison. Because mm -hmm. you got to go through training and all that, and I didn't last long. Right. I may have last four months Right. before they said, I, you know, yeah. I was a little tardy. Mm -hmm. Now, Ross claimed he only worked the job for four months and never made it to a real prison because he didn't even complete training from being tardy so much. But this is the same Ross that received a certificate of appreciation for never missing a day. He'd work as a CO for 18 months at the South Florida Reception Center in Miami. This was the first stop for any inmate entering the prison system from Miami, Broward, Palm Beach, or any other neighboring counties. This was very much prison, and the South Florida Reception Center has repeatedly made the news, like when four COs were arrested for beating an elderly inmate to death, or when 11 inmates died from COVID. But still, Rick Ross got a pass because even if he never sold drugs a day in his life, the music sounded good enough to forget it. So why still lie about your old job? And if you weren't flipping bricks in between criminal justice class and football practice, when did it happen? Apparently in 2008, the same year the pictures were released, Rick Ross was arrested on gun and marijuana charges. The investigation would be assigned to the gang unit task force and transcripts would state the gang unit was given the case because Rick Ross claims affiliation with the Carroll City Cartel. Now Triple C's, according to Wikipedia, was a hip hop group founded by Rick Ross in 2005. Named after the Carroll City neighborhood of Miami, the group featured Rick Ross, Gunplay, Torch, and Young Breed. The transcripts would mention YouTube, and Ross didn't shy away from his cartel affiliation because it wasn't an actual cartel. The transcripts would also reveal this was actually Ross's first arrest as an adult at 32 years old. So technically speaking, you're not a criminal until you get caught, right? And Ross was never caught until after his career already blew up. Aside from marijuana, Ross wouldn't be arrested for anything serious until 2017 when him and his former security guard kidnapped the landscaper by forcing him into a room and pistol whipping him. Ross would plea out to lesser charges as a first time offender and the charges would be removed from his criminal history after paying all fines and completing probation. So maybe Ross was just too smart to get caught with any bricks. Going back to his interview, Ross would state he got his job in corrections after his big homie got in trouble and suggested it. What made you want to do that? One of my big homies, one of my big homies had just got in trouble and a lot of people, a lot of things were going on and mm -hmm. he just suggested it. He and fuck I, with it or no? No, nah, it was, no, nah, I didn't. Anything you got to really do and fucking running and jogging and yeah, all of that shit, man. The big homie Ross was referring to is none other than Kenneth Booby Williams. Booby was the leader of the Booby Boys, an infamous murderous drug gang that terrorized Miami in the 90s. Law enforcement officials would state they built a drug empire that smuggled 5 tons and $85 million worth of cocaine across 25 Florida cities and 12 states from 1990 to 1998. The gang was blamed for 35 murders, and when they were all indicted, 
the shootings and murder rate literally dropped in four of Miami's worst neighborhoods. According to a Street Stories article, the Booby Boys reached national attention through Rick Ross, who rose to fame in hip-hop's cocaine era, when everybody was rapping about cocaine and selling it. He'd introduced the world to Miami's underworld by wearing a Booby Boys t-shirt, naming members in his songs, and speaking of them in multiple interviews. When I talk about yayo, yeah, when I talk about streets, body counts, that's where I really come from, you know what I'm saying? I came up in Care City, the heart of Miami, and just so happened in my generation, we had a, a, a good friend of ours by the name of Kenneth Booby Williams, who was featured on America's Most Wanted in 1999. You understand? And, um, he was accused for over 200 homicides and running an $80 million enterprise. An anonymous person would speak with the Miami New Times back in 2008 over the correction officer controversy. He'd state, Ross ain't no fake cat. He's always been savvy in my experiences crossing paths with him way back in the day. Ross ran with the Booby Boys, who were among the top five gangsters down here in Miami in the mid 90s. When Booby Boys leader Kenneth Booby Williams got snatched by the feds, they also snatched several Miami-Dade police officers as well because they were on Booby's payroll. Now Ross wasn't no kingpin himself, but close enough because he ran with some real hustlers that touched major work. Streetwise, Rick Ross is back is against the wall. He can't really elaborate on everything because Booby is still dealing with the federal case right now on appeal. The streets know that when Ross was a CO, he was working for Booby on a mission. Now this story would coincide with what Ross said on his full send interview, but we don't even know who said it because the person was anonymous and could have been Rick Ross himself or a member of his team. Reading between the lines, this dude was a legend Ross got a job as a CO to work for Booby in prison and Booby was a notorious drug gang leader. But the timelines don't even add up. Ross started working in prison in 95 and resigned in 97, the same year some of the Booby Boys got locked up. Then the feds indicted 15 of them in 1999. Ross's so-called big homie never even made it to Florida State Prison and would end up in the feds, meaning Ross never came across him while working in state prison. Another anonymous person claiming to be the baby mother of one of the booby boys stated Ross was never a booby boy and never a dope boy either. Everyone connected to Kenneth Booby Williams was arrested and Ross only went to high school with some of the members. She would claim Booby was an inmate at the South Florida Reception Center before going to prison when he recognized Rick Ross and thought he'd be beneficial. But even her story doesn't make sense as Booby doesn't show up in the Florida Department of Corrections Offender Search. So yet again, another story that can't be proven by another anonymous source. Whether or not Ross promoted the Booby Boys to give himself a more street appearance, Ross would skyrocket in the stardom and rise to legendary status in the state of Florida. Because of that, nobody really gives a fuck if Ross's whole persona was fake because he still made it. But apparently Ross does because he responded to me on Instagram. Now I made a post about him lying over how much time he actually did working in prison and he'd respond in a series of Instagram posts stating I'm a rat. He'd show my mugshot in one post and in another a statement. The statement would read, the suspect, Cherry, made several spontaneous statements. He stated that the gun was in his friend Alex's room inside the closet under the green shirt. He stated that he was shooting the gun in the middle of the street and that he is sorry. He stated he found it in a vacant house that he was using to piss in. He saw a shiny object and reached down and found the gun. Now Rick Ross would at me putting multiple rat emojis while adding Drake saying, white boy, who next? He'd then make another post writing the same thing. Now since Ross added me, I now had the ability to DM him. So I sent him a voice message back. Oh yeah, you played, Officer Ricky, you played. <laughs> I saved my homie people from getting jammed up before they went inside the house and found that gun and took them off Section 8. I blew that pistol, that was my case. You played though. I ain't wake up and put a badge on, you did. Now whoever decided to send that to Ross didn't send him the other 25 pages 
detailing what actually took place and how I admitted I fired the gun and the gun was mine to keep anyone else from being charged. Ross would make another post to Instagram, once again mentioning me. You got your minions. What's the other white boy name? 1090. He looked like a fucking wet little whale flapping. Shut up. Get mind your business, you peon. Man, apologize. Truth is, me and Drake have no ties and have never spoke, but he'd follow me on the gram shortly after Ross's little tirade. I myself was surprised Ross was so quick to respond to his CO past as he's changed the story so many times and added new twists, alleging he was pushing weight in prison. But apparently it still strikes a nerve almost a decade later to see himself in that uniform. And like I told Officer Ricky, he's the one that decided to wake up and put on a badge. I know you know Noriega, the real Noriega. Oh shit, Ricky's friend's outside, you hit him? There they go. Ricky's crew. He said he got a $2 million crew in New York City. He was talking about the NYPD. Now I know like y'all know, everybody got favorites and it seems that once you reach a certain level of superstardom or money, nobody really gives a fuck anymore about what used to be or what never happened. Nobody's gonna care if you never sold dope. Nobody's gonna care if you whatever because you already made it right fake it till you make it it works out how it works out i couldn't even find a picture of rick ross and booby together maybe i just didn't recognize dude or whatever but i couldn't even find a picture of them together it was all just ross shouting out his big homie who he ran with but ross was never tied into none of the shit that was going on he was investigated as being a member of the Carroll City Cartel, but obviously they saw he wasn't doing shit except making music, and there was nothing to get Ross on. I refuse to believe he's the smartest criminal. Everybody always says that shit like, oh, I just, I didn't get caught, I didn't get caught. But all the major guys get caught. Or at least get investigated by the feds, right? Maybe you get lucky enough to beat that shit. But everybody else is getting caught. Now, Rick Ross, when he blew up, it was around the time of everyone rapping about cocaine. It fit the scene. He took off with it. He was the one from Miami that did it. Cool. Come to find out he was a fucking CO, which is crazy. Because at the end of the day, you know, you got a lot of people arguing, oh, but the COs are the ones that bring us the drugs and they give us this and they give us that. They're also the ones that walk in, tell you to hang up on the phone. They don't care if it's your mother, your girlfriend, your kid. It's time to lock down. Imagine Rick Ross walking around, lock down, chow, chow. Imagine that. That's a CO. I don't give a fuck how much dope they're bringing you because they're putting somebody else in cuffs taking them to confinement. And this is a fun fact for everybody that's been to prison, you know this is true, especially in the state of Florida. When you get a job there, it's mandatory. Your sergeant is gonna press you to put inmates in confinement and write DIs on them. They wanna see that you're actively doing your job, which is fucking with the inmates. So there's no way that you're in there moving dope, flipping this, selling that, not putting a bunch of other people away because the ones that are really moving shit they're putting the most people away to cover up their tracks makes sense right if you're selling dope in prison you're not locking anyone up you're gonna look a little bit fucking suspicious so while this guy might be serving you he's fucking somebody else over but to be honest with you none of the shit about him serving anything in prison made any sense to me because you went to college for criminal justice you got a job inside of a prison and then you resigned before everyone you knew went into prison. And the thing is, you were working at a reception center. So even if Booby got sent there, he'd only be there for about six weeks until he got transferred off to a major institution. That's just how reception works. You don't stay there. But let me know y'all's thoughts and opinions. I mean, why is he still lying about how much time he actually worked in the Florida Department of Corrections if he's so big, it can't even stain his career. Make that make sense. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Until next time.